afternoon. First of all, I must thank uh, Dr. Jude Damaha for inviting me on behalf of the Sri Lanka College of Obstetrician. I am a clinician actually, a BOG, working at Castle Street Hospital. So now at the moment, uh, we are seeing a uh, few cases in our hospital at the OPD level as well as in the wards. Uh, fortunately, we never had a single death at the moment. But we had, uh, actually, I have seen the epidemic in 2013 outbreak and uh, we manage some cases in Desoisa Hospital. That time I was a consultant at Desoisa Hospital. So the experience I had uh, there, I can, you know, recall. So as you know, the definitions, you know, influenza like illnesses, respiratory illnesses with the temperature of 37.8 degrees or greater with or a plus of with a cough for sore throat and to call it influenza it has to be a viral diagnosis confirmed by the virologist and sometimes we see the complication of influenza with pneumonia so it's a clinical diagnosis plus the changes for, uh, seen in the x-ray now you might uh, see why the x-ray I think now as pregnant women are carrying a baby we are a little scared of getting x-ray for the pregnant mother but I think with the uh, covering of the pregnancy abdomen you can take x-ray safely and x-ray is only harming one tenth you know only the lethal dose is one tenth of the lethal dose with the normal chest x-ray so I think x-ray we are a little worried but when it's really necessary we can take an x-ray Right, so we have an uh, outbreak at the moment, so we have to, and mostly the influenza. And the clinical features, fever, as I said, or history of fever and cough or sore throat. There may be some patients without the history of fever sometimes, right? And they may be presenting with uh, uh, symptoms like body aches, chills, muscle pain, headache, fatigue, running nose and occasionally diarrhea and vomiting. Now recently, now I saw few patients, they don't complain of fever, but they have a bad cough, sometimes running nose. So maybe they are presented with atypical presentations without fever and running nose. So if you take the physiological and immunological changes during pregnancy, you know, with the pregnancy enhancement of the abdomen, there may be uh, reduced lung capacity and tidal volume but at early in pregnancy you don't get big abdomen and they have the full capacity and also the increased oxygen consumption is there in pregnancy and the cardiac output increases and pregnancy is a immuno lowered immunity status so they are at risk of acquiring the infection and for complications of the uh, illness so, and they are at high risk of hospital admissions and there are complications also. So, some of these complications with influenza, you can have acute bronchitis, group, uh, otitis media, primary viral pneumonia, and on top of primary viral pneumonia, you can get secondary bacterial infection, myocarditis, pericarditis, encephalitis, and all these can cause acute severe illness and death in high risk population. So, pregnancies also at high risk and with pregnancy there are some not only for the mother pregnancy complications and with bad outcome for the fetus they can have increased incidence of spontaneous miscarriages preterm births pre fetal hypoxia and sometimes intrauterine death maybe due to hypoxia or maybe due to the febrile illness itself high fever can kill babies when the temperature goes up inside and the pregnant mothers with comorbidity like diabetes which is not well controlled or heart disease, bronchial asthma and severely anemic patients and sometimes rarely with cancer they are at high risk of these pregnancy complications and adverse outcomes. So when we are caring the pregnant mothers, now we see them in the outpatient department, clinics, in the community. So we should educate the mothers about this early clinical manifestation of influenza.
and if they have any of these features they should consult the physician and if they have immediately if they have flu like symptoms care for symptomatic ones should be organized in a separate area in the clinic or in the opd i think pregnant mothers should not be you know cared with the others when you are caring these patients and if they have complications of this pregnancy influenza or progressive disease they should be admitted to the hospital not as they should not be treated as an outpatient procedure and also compulsory follow up visit should be arranged even in the absence of worsening of the disease now i can remember now i went back to yesterday i met uh, my colleague there vog he said he had a patient with influenza with pneumonia and she was treated uh, outpatient and then admitted to the ward and then went home and came back with worsening situation and they had to ventilate and ultimately they lost the patient so this follow up is it also important for these pregnant mothers uh, uh, in case of influenza so we have to get the involvement of the mhs phms gps all these people who are caring with pregnant mothers for uh, making them awareness and tell them what to do with if they get the symptoms and other problems now this is a questionable thing all pregnant mothers should be admitted to the hospital if they develop any symptoms or signs of progressive disease or danger or if they fail to improve within 48 hours of the onset of symptoms now all the mothers with flus coming to the opd may not be admitted then you will be having overcrowded wards actually in 2013 we had this outbreak so we had to convert one of our auditorium to a isolated ward to keep only the influenza patients and some of them were diagnosed positive and some of them were treated uh, with uh, other measures also i think during that epidemic few patients went to the icu also from the ward with complications so we have to admit if they are failing or if they are developing complications so in the wards or in the hospital we need to have isolation place now in at the moment we don't have isolation ward in the castle street hospital so we are isolating them in the ward itself and the other simple things like you know face mask hand hygiene and involvement of the senior staff and collecting and sending samples for virology those are important steps and early commencement of treatment with tamiflu or seltamivir without waiting for lab diagnosis is important and avoid nsaids for these patients because they can uh, get and the uh, antiviral therapy so as early as possible and it is advised to be you know given within the first 48 hours of the onset of symptoms so the dosage is 75 mg twice daily for 5 days and also this drug is safe in first trimester now we try to avoid drugs in the first trimester but this is prone to be safe in first trimester in severe cases we can double the dosage and we can give longer durations if you consider that treatment is required for longer duration and chemoprophylaxis with oseltamivir is not recommended and it should not be delayed until the lab diagnosis come now in my ward now at the moment i have three patients one is prone to be positive but yesterday we sent that patient home after recovery so always we get the help of our physician for this kind of ma uh, management because uh, as consultant obstetricians we can't be managing these uh, problems alone and they may need supportive therapy in addition to uh, whatever we give adequate nutrition hydration oral fluids antipyretics antibiotics when are necessary and rehydration those are also important in managing pregnant mothers and when they are with cough dyspnea as we advise them to get the now in our wards most of the time we have pulse oximeters and to measure the oxygen saturation and supplementary oxygen if it is proving hypoxemia and severe cases may need intensive care monitoring and treatment therefore in pregnancy if they admit to the ward you should have another place to send if they are going bad down in the and as i said we should avoid anti inflammatory drugs and sometimes 
these mothers are at risk of going into premature labor, maybe due to the flu illness itself, maybe pyrexia. So once they are admitted, if you think that this mother is going to go for a premature delivery, we advise administration of cost steroids to improve the lung maturity. So we give betamethasone or dexamethasone for these mothers, uh, provided uh, they are not in bad shape. And if they are presenting with clinical features of progressive disease, they may need intensive care. So those are manifestation of cardiorespiratory distress with shortness of breath during, either, during exercise or in physical activity while resting or any of these, and low blood pressure, hypoxia, and I said radiological signs of lower respiratory tract disease. They may need ICU care, central nervous system involvement with altered mental status, uh, unconsciousness, drowsiness, recurring persistent convulsions, confusion, severe weakness or paralysis and also when they are severely dehydrated. So these patients may need ICU care and support to therapy, sometimes ventilation, sometimes more monitoring, sometimes uh, hydration, electrolytes, all this may be managed in a better place rather than in a ward. So, if we can have a HDU in the ward, we can manage intermediate patients, but severe cases should go to the uh, ICU. So, in questioning, if they have question, you know, answerable questions to following, does she has uh, new pain or uh, pressure on the chest other, other than pain with coughing, or if she is unable to keep the liquids down, or if she shows signs of dehydration, such as dizziness when standing, or is, if she is less responsive to their normal or confused from flu, but then got worse again, second time, if she gets worse, then they need immediate care, may not be ICU, high dependency or ICU care in these kind of patients. And when you consider the delivery, now we don't have to expedite the delivery just because they are having flu. Now, I say now, if they go into labor, some of them, they go into spontaneous onset of labor, so better to have a separate area isolating them from the other mothers, because the risk of getting infection to the other mothers and the routine care, like what we give for normal uh, uh, interpartum care, and in case of obstetric complications, we may have to do appropriate interventions like cesarean sections or, or uh, whatever the instrumental deliveries and they are at high risk of fetal distress. So these mothers may need continuous fetal monitoring during labor. And sometimes we may have to deliver these mother babies due to the complication itself. They need prolonged ventilation with ventilator support. You know, the pregnancy, it impairs the lung capacity and the ventilation. So in those cases, we better deliver the babies considering the maturity of the baby and the disease process of the mother, only then we need to deliver. Otherwise, it's not an indication to deliver routinely when they get flu and uh, just a cough. And there we may need to get the help of our anesthetists. Sometimes they go for, most of the time if they are ventilated, they are going for uh, general anesthesia. And possibly if you can keep them in the minimal duration in the hospital, then that is the best thing to prevent uh, the spread. And don't separate the baby from the mother after the delivery and the other routine, barrier nursing, face mask and the hygiene in handling the baby. And you don't have to separate them from lactation and you can breastfeed the baby and observe the newborn. I think the pediatrician or the neonatologist should observe them for the illnesses uh, and maybe treated with antivirals. And before discharging, they should be completed off at least with the antivirals and severity, depending on the severity, you may get the help of the clinicians to decide on the clinical judgment and also very important to notify these patients to the particular MOH area regarding this illness and uh, that is a requirement in our hospital management. So if you can, I prefer if you can get at least during this epidemic mothers with influenza vaccine. I think this we had discussions with the Ministry of Health last time also when we reviewed our mothers 
who died with respiratory illness influenza in 2013. We requested the ministry to provide them with influenza vaccine so that will minimize the, influence, uh, the incidence and illness severity with the women and infants. So I don't want to tell you what whatever the barrier nursing and the uh, other specific measures we have to take in the hospitals like what washing hands, covering, wearing masks, all these are very important in, and better to have the awareness among the public and also with the pregnant mothers about this disease and come to us or the clinicians earlier than late before they develop the respiratory uh, you know, illness with difficulties. So if possible, we better educate these mothers in our antenatal clinics and the mass media and other ways about this illness. I think that's all I have to tell about pregnancy management. Thank you.